Welcome to the Depth of Field podcast, where film, video, and animation professionals discuss the art of their craft and realities of the industry. Today on the show, we have Mitch Davis, a talented illustrator and motion designer who recently won an award for his work on a powerful suicide prevention video. And stay tuned for the end where it gives you an out of this world challenge that you can focus on this week. Are you ready? Well, we're here with Mitch Davis, a very talented, award-winning motion designer. Thanks for joining us, Mitch. Hey, Adrian. Thanks for having me on, man. This is awesome. It probably sounds really weird to be called an award-winning motion designer just because it's so new, but I think you should be milking that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Well, before we get into that and the project that you won an award for, uh, let's just talk a little bit about how you got into motion graphics. So I'm from Spokane, Washington. And I went to design school here after realizing that the movie industry is not what I wanted to be a part of. I spent some time, you know, as a production assistant and things like that and doing the onset game and it was hell. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I had a choice, you know, 60 grand to go to film school or kind of take a different route and design interested me. Um, and so I went to SFCC here in Spokane and I took a year of design school. And they, at least in that program, they have you switch off on your second year and choose web or print. And I was like, I want to do video. There's, there's nothing for video here. And so that was what kind of led me to, to taking online courses, which is pretty much how the majority of motion graphics people learn. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They say they get their uh, diploma from Google University and stuff like that. And, but it was... It was great. I basically just treated that year like it was another year of school, but just did it online when I wasn't working. And uh, after that, got a job at a studio in Spokane, worked there for four years, and they're more interactive. Uh, so did a lot of games and, and things like that. Uh, and it was, you know, around the four-year mark, I started realizing that I really enjoy doing video. Those were always my favorite projects. And um I realized I could do it myself. So that was when I decided to go freelance and more or less tried to start my own studio, just one man and my wife, Jamie helps with that. It's been going two years now, uh, full time and it's been great. Very cool. So what do you, what do you like most about motion graphics? Cause it's a very, it's kind of a high barrier to entry industry and there's a lot of things going on. Um, what drew you to that medium specifically? Well, uh, it's kind of, I feel like it is that branch. Like I was talking about after a year of design, it just motion graphics and design are, are kind of one and the same in my mind. Um, if you're mm -hmm. just a designer, you're often designing for motion. Mm -hmm. And if you're just an animator, you're often working with designs and changing designs. And so it really is, um, I guess one in the same industry. And so I'm, I've always been interested in art. And so I think that's why I kind of went to design. And then, I, so I wouldn't say I'm necessarily even passionate about motion graphics. I'm, I'm passionate about animation and I'm passionate about design because the, th the things you can do with it, the things you can create, the emotions you can make people feel and things like that are really kind of the driving force for, for wanting to do creative projects. And so uh, motion graphics is kind of an offshoot of that. It's kind of the modern, modern ages approach to handling animation and the majority of content you see is in that industry. And so I think that's kind of why I just kind of fell into that. Cool. So you don't really view yourself as uh, like the label motion designer. You actually do view it as a medium. And I see that like with your website, you brand yourself as an illustrator and designer, but you, you definitely are using it as a tool. You don't think of yourself as like, I'm just a motion designer and that's what I'm going to be focusing on for years and years. You kind of are just utilizing it because that's what's effective at telling the stories right now. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that will carry over into anything you do, right? Yeah. It's like, it's, it's the creative process just in general and the, and the messages just you're trying to send are what will, you know, transcend any medium. So yeah, right now motion graphics is insanely popular, uh, but tomorrow might not be. So 
Yeah, I think as long as you're carrying the principles along with you, then then yeah, that's where my interest lies. Awesome. Do you uh, spend any time working on personal projects or is it mostly client work these days? Oh, I wish. <laughs> uh, yeah, my wife and I've had a cartoon idea that we've been wanting to do for a long time. And it's it sounds terrible just that, you know, we're kind of half heartedly working on it. But I think that's the extent of my personal work. Uh, and certainly the goal is to get closer there. It's like, you really have to choose how you spend your time and, uh, God forbid you might want to just relax every now and then and, and just chill instead of work. But, uh, it's certainly lighting a fire under me. Cause I see as people get older, uh, those dreams kind of fade away. And yeah, cert- yeah. You know, they're dreams you have since you're a child. So they're not ones that you easily let go of. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I've certainly seen, um, a benefit to personal projects, even if they don't have an attachment to like a mountain that you're trying to climb or anything like that. Um, this last uh, October, I took part in Inktober for a bit, which is just uh, you you practice ink drawing uh, every day of the month of October. And I, I spent every day that I could drawing uh, movie posters and all the main characters' faces were replaced with butts. Yeah, and that was hilarious, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Thank you very much. It, it was ridiculously fun. Uh, such a fun thing that made me laugh while doing it. And that's kind of rare in a lot of creative stuff when you're when you're working for someone else or, or whatnot. So that was shortly before October. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to spend October drawing butts. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, the... Good news is like based on your portfolio, you've been able to work on a really wide variety of styles. And it seems like you do end up having a lot of fun with the work that you're, you're making, even though it's client work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. And I, th- I mean, that can be a blessing and a curse. And I, th- I know we've talked about this, but when a new project comes in, I just get this attachment to it and I get passionate about it. And that's kind of what drives me. But it also is kind of, it can dwindle, you know, your passion yeah. for a project. So uh, it's not, it's just this weird, I guess, muse to have. And as a creative, you seem more like a routine person where you you yeah. are pretty organized and strict with yourself about what you do. And it gets you to where you want to be creatively, uh, which is something I'm looking you know, I'm more interested day by day because I've always just been kind of seat in my pants get excited about something and then near the end of the project, if your excitement is dwindling, it's, it's really hard to finish, but right, that's right. really the most important part is to finish. Well, let's talk about that a little bit about how you go about starting a project and what that, what it's like, I guess, managing that excitement and then harnessing it into actually doing the work. Do you have any specific routine or do you like always start a project in the morning or between certain hours or are you a late night worker? Like, what is that what is that process in terms of launching a project from from that excitement phase and like jumping into doing the work? I think starting is the most important part in that I con- when you concept, you're trying not to redo the same thing that's been done or yeah, or get too close to things you've already done. And so for concepting, I try my best to just get out of the motion graphics world, to get out of the design world, to get off dribble and Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest and all that stuff and try to find inspiration somewhere different, yeah. which is, it's hard. Everything's been done and everyone says that and it's true, but, uh, we also all have unique voices. And so it's just best to get stuff from somewhere else. And, you know, whether that be video games or nature or music or, or whatnot, I think it's important to try to, uh, to draw associations from other areas. And so that's really the most important way to start a project for me is talking with the client, understanding as much as I can about their, their product or service or a film or whatnot. And then just trying to grab inspiration somewhere else and have their voice be heard in a unique way. Cause the the biggest thing I thought when I started is I don't want to saturate the already like crazy overpopulated creative market there's Mm -hmm. there's stuff (laughs) there's like incredible videos that are a copy of a copy of a copy it's it's like oh this has already been done three times but it's still great and so if you're trying to push the envelope and do and 
do, put your best foot forward, then why do it on something that's not that unique? Let's talk about this video that you made on suicide prevention, which I mean, there's a lot of unique styles going on. Like even in that video on its own, you didn't stick to just one visual style. You kind of incorporated cell animation. You kind of incorporated characters and environments at different angles and like a point of view sequence. And it was really cool. What was it like working on that type of video with such creativity going on with the visuals, but it's also a very intense subject matter? Uh, well, first off, thanks, man. That was uh, the the longest production schedule for a project I've ever worked on. Uh, and it was kind of off and on. I finished a lot of videos during it, but the video from like concept to finish was about eight or nine months. So it mm -hmm. was just on my plate for, <laughs> for forever. And we certainly had some flexibility on it. So I felt it was a good chance to, to stretch and do something a little bit different where I'm trying out different things. And so that's where all those kind of different aesthetics came from. Did they give you any direction or were you just kind of leading this creatively? So I worked with uh, a studio in Spokane called Treatment um, and QPR was their client. And so they developed the script with, along with QPR. And then I worked with Benji Wade from Treatment and to kind of like do the storyboard process. And so from storyboard on, I had pretty much total creative freedom. And then, you know, during each stage, we'd talk and kind of figure things out. And it really, it really was both of our baby. <laughs> it was like we were take, taking care of a baby together for the for that time. It was kind of ridiculous. Uh, and we put a lot of, of care into it. But um, yeah, so at the same time, it, it was definitely a lot of pressure. Um, because originally the plan was to have, you know, extra designers on it and things like that. But it just all kind of ended up being me. Well, if I didn't mention this in the beginning, this is the uh, video that won the Addy Award. And we'll post a link to it in the show notes so everybody listening can watch it. Definitely worth it. But moving on to another thing you did, which is a little more lighthearted, was the TV introduction of the, of the show Z Nation, which is really cool involving zombies. What was that experience like? Was that, that must have been totally different. Yeah, and I don't I don't get the chance to do stuff in entertainment a lot, but it's it's had to have been one of my favorite projects ever worked on. Um, and I've talked to this about other people on production of that show, but I'm like insanely lucky to be working on it. Not that it was necessarily easy project, but it's just people work on these franchises for forever. Like they're sometimes I don't know much about this particular TV show, but when I was working in movies, I remember working like 16 hour days at times. Uh, wow. I remember being on productions where people would like other production assistants would like fall asleep on the, on the way on the drive home. And wow. it was just, I, I don't know how people do it. Like it's an insane lifestyle. And I feel like you kind of have to be a little bit of a thrill seeker for it. So here I come in, I'm just one guy working out of my basement and I get the luxury of working on it for a time and still being able to be a part of the project. It's, it almost feels like I'm just stepping in and posing as yeah. <laughs> another member of, and when I worked on season three, um, you know, a director of an episode I worked on invited me to set. And so I got to meet some people and go to the premieres and things like that. And it's, it's cool to have work that's like on television and, and things like that. And, uh, you know, I'm working directly with showrunner Carl Schaefer of uh, Z Nation. And, you know, this is someone who's <laughs> spent their whole career just getting up to showrunner, the top position of, you know, running a show. And there's so many steps you got to go through that. So it's kind of it was just kind of an odd thing to be there. Um, but that's... I, it's beautiful. Like when you specialize in something, you know, people come to you for that thing, be it title design or, or whatnot. And I, I think that's a luxury that that's just really awesome. I feel blessed for that, honestly. In the last episode, we talked to a visual effects artist and he was telling us uh, that when he's involved in movies versus corporate work, he feels like such a small piece. Whereas in the corporate world, mm -hmm. like your your contribution is actually much larger and people are looking to you. Did you would you agree with that statement? Do you feel the same way? Yes, at least yeah. on at least on things I worked on. Definitely. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. There's just more people involved with these entertainment uh, type projects. 
Yeah, and it's a different dynamic, too. I feel like there's an insane amount of back and forth, and there's an insane amount of uh, att attachment and um, ownership, people taking ownership for as far as, like, they they try really, really hard to put their best work out on everything. Right. Uh, and in advertising, there's just so much content being put out there that it's very hard not to do cookie cutter eventually. Yeah. Um, so I, I see that happen a lot more. I, I would say it's probably safe to say that the, the more crazy, intense, unique stuff that really steps out of bounds is coming from entertainment. One thing I didn't know if we were going to talk about, but now it just seems like we really should, was our experience working together under Modio. It doesn't have to be a secret. We obviously worked together on a lot of projects over the years. What? And you, yeah, you, you don't remember. <laughs> uh, you obviously are working with other studios and you manage your own clients. So you have, a, you have a unique perspective, especially to me, somebody who's only seeing the Modio perspective. But like based on my experience in the industry, um, and I think you would agree is that like what we have going in terms of our small team and the consistency is it seems like a rare thing in terms of like we're not you guys aren't employees we're not all under the one roof yet we're still kind of a loyal team always working together. Um, I'm curious to hear about your experience you know working in that scenario with me and Modio and then your experience with other studios and kind of just what you feel about the industry in general from that kind of perspective. Uh, yeah, I think the way that Modio set up, that is hiring, you know, freelance creatives who get to work, have the freedom to work out of their own area, uh, is the way to go. And I think it's the, I think we'll be seeing more and more and more of it. Um, yeah, agreed. I worked in a studio for four years and it, it was a great studio. I thought they were great at what they did. Um, there's something about the studio or agency dynamic that's a little weird to me though of it, I don't feel like you're as true of yourself you're as genuine it's just harder to be if you have a ton of people in a studio yeah. and you have these very obvious like who's above you who's below you and things like that when you're a freelance creative working for a company it's so much easier for people to feel equal and honestly it needs to be that way if you're in a creative setting i think um it doesn't it doesn't need to be like everyone's equal equal pay equal you know title and stuff it's just that people need to respect each other the same amount and so i i think that's that works perfectly with the kind of system that modio has set up and i really enjoy having that kind of freedom and things like that right and it's so an example of like something that we've done is i like to provide you guys with statement to work and the only reason I like to do that is because I want to take those type of things off your plate so that you can actually focus on doing creative work. What's your, what's your experience like with other studios? Do you, do you have to provide statement of work? Do, do they do the same thing? I'm curious how that experience is in terms of like setting up the agreements. Cause I know this is actually a pain point for a lot of people in, in the <laughs> industry. If yeah. a client comes to them and they're like, okay, do we have to like write this down and agree to all this? Um, and it's not, a, it's not like common knowledge uh, for creative people to know how to do like basic agreements and stuff like that. So what's your experience been away from Modio? No, you're absolutely right. Like, and I really appreciate the SOWs because <laughs> it's my least favorite part of the job is uh, legal and accounting. Yeah, uh, it's and all those do keep you away from doing what what you consider to be your your top skill. Like, mm -hmm. you're trying to be a craftsman at something while still being asked to answer emails and sign this. And so, I'd say with most agencies I have to provide my my own paperwork um, sometimes I don't which is awful <laughs> but when it's directly with clients it's always you know I provide my own paperwork but no I think that's brilliant like you need if you're hiring a I don't know if you're hiring a specialist yeah you, you just want them to be doing what you're hiring them to do so I think that's brilliant and I really appreciate <laughs> that that's how I to do it for you know hiring freelance professionals too if i was going to ask you the one thing that you dislike most about the motion design industry would it be that or is there something else that comes to mind uh, you know i was <laughs> trying to think about it uh there's not a lot to to dislike about the industry and i'm i definitely want to be as transparent as possible because i i hate 
when people are too guarded about the industry they're in out of fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the only way we're going to get better is if we talk about the bad stuff. But um, it really is one of the more tight knit communities where any time I've reached out to a professional who's like way above me about, you know, for advice um, or creative consulting or or anything like that, I've people are always transparent about it and always willing to help. And it's crazy. You have people who have been in the industry doing movies and stuff and yeah uh i I reached out to an animator who animated on space jam and like got (laughs) got a response instantly uh just yeah so it's hard to complain there is one little nitpicky thing about this industry that (laughs) bugs me uh is hand-drawn like traditional animation when we add that that that's kind of being added more and more to motion graphics videos and they refer to it as cell animation, which to me just feels like a huge disservice to <laughs> to animators back in the day who actually animated on celluloid and like right. yeah. frame by frame, you know, painted on the backs of them and things like that. <laughs> if there was one thing I could change that was nitpicky, it would be stop calling it cell animation. <laughs> yeah, terminology. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Are you, do you encounter many new animators in the industry or let's say we have some people that are kind of just starting in their motion design career. Like what would you tell them as a common mistake to avoid or, you know, something that they should just be aware of as they start their journey in this? Um, try not to get, try not to focus too much on the technical would be Mm -hmm. my main advice because everyone's worried about what software people are using. And obviously you should be up on it the industry standards, but people focus too much on limitations of software. And uh, that's yet another great thing about the motion graphics community is how big, how full it is of people who are answering like questions or solving Mm -hmm. problems that Adobe maybe should be, (laughs) but it's like Adobe couldn't possibly, everybody has, uh, you know, their, their way they want to, work through the creative process and so there ends up being all these workflow tools that work for everybody and and that's great so i would say don't worry about the technical too much because you you'll solve that like on the job (laughs) that's on the job training right there but the what you want to start with so that you're not learning bad technique is gestalt design principles uh the 12 principles of animation um take you know, some film classes to learn about things like composition and framing and, and timing and kind of take those three, you know, pillars, design, animation, and film, and have that be your, your core. Um, and chances are, if you're in this industry, you've been already been inspired your whole life by cartoons and movies and films Mm -hmm. and music. So that, again, that just kind of adds to your voice. That's going to come through. So, don't focus too much about soaking everything that's on Vimeo staff picks. Don't focus on using all the right scripts and stuff yet. Cause that's just going to come as you, as you go. And I, I think that makes it a lot easier. And I think we'll start to see less and less people who are their portfolios filled with Andrew Kramer tutorials, which is great. That's mm-hmm. how I started. Me too. But, but if you want to not <laughs> oversaturate the market, then, focus less on that and more on the creative process. What would you say is the most challenging part of your career so far to get you where you are? Like what's something difficult that you had to walk through? Hmm. It could be a particularly bad project that was just with a a super um, detail oriented client or just a a deal gone bad or not getting paid. Is it like, what's (laughs) what's like a pain point like that that you've had to walk through? (laughs) Well, it's like, what can I talk about that won't get me in legal trouble? Cause those... Well, just don't say their name, then you'll be fine. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I when I when I first went off to start my own studio, I guess, because uh, that's what I originally tried to do. I, I wanted to start a studio, so, you know, with the hopes of hiring people down the road and things like that, but just trying to develop intellectual property and... And again, you know, one of my main goals was to make a cartoon. And so it's just kind of like a down the road goal was to start a studio and do freelance at the same time. Well, I came up with a name submitted for a federal trademark 
waited six months for the limit and then like the day before uh it was supposed to go th- go through uh, a company <laughs> told me if i continued to file for that that they'd sue me wow uh and the name <laughs> you know this is a company in a totally different industry uh different name but you know i spent about eight months stressing about that and it ended up you know i just had to give it up anyway yeah and so yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely the worst is any sort of legal thing. Oh, man. Anytime you get an email, it's like makes your heart race and stuff. And again, it's one of those things that keeps you doing what from what doing what you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's a shame uh, that, you know, when you try when you start out small, there's a lot of those little things that that you come up against. Um, and, you know, I think everybody has has their their problems just like that. Um, but, yeah. It's it's definitely adds to just adds to your <laughs> resilience, I think, which is great. But other other than that, I think I have a pretty awesome experience with clients, and I, I don't think I've ever had a re- really a bad experience uh, when I work directly with a client because uh, you know I worked four years in a studio where I didn't really get to talk to clients, and when I started my own, I thought that was one of the best things. Is <laughs> if a client asked for can you make this, uh, can you turn this to this and be like, well, <laughs> that's going to take a long time. I could just be straight with them. And they'll be like, Oh, yeah. n- never mind though. Let's do this instead. Uh, when you add all these different people who kind of manage a project in between, there's so much more room for miscommunication or, or yeah. f- for, for the project to just get bloated with time and, and being over budget and things like that. So true. So, Overall, since I've gone freelance, experience has been great creatively. Wonderful. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and move this to the wrap up phase. And as we do that, one thing I like to ask every guest is what's something that you would encourage our listeners to focus on this week? And it can be totally specific to motion graphics or it could be a broader thing to do with just creative work in general. Yeah, uh, I I came up with some of those more like homework, uh, (laughs) but for design and animation, uh, I would recommend just trying to create something that's alien, something that's not, you know, Mm. of our earth and Mm. apply like earth traits to it. So whether that be design, if you're designing, you know, a futuristic, uh, you know, vehicle or something, and you're applying different mechanics from, cars that we know from the 60s or or whatever to it or if you're designing a alien creature with bioluminescent veins like you grab from creatures you might find at the bottom of the ocean and same with animation like look at something in life to apply their movement and life essence to what you're creating whatever it is you create you probably have a unique design style just go with that and create a way that is awesome that's a good challenge Okay, well, before we go, is there any sites or social media that you want to plug if people want to get in touch with you, ask questions? We'll definitely put your your personal site in the show notes. And I just watched, I, I didn't see your updated reel, but dude, that looks phenomenal. Like your <laughs> new, I saw you post the, the, the intro as your new Facebook GIF uh, or as your like profile, but dude, your reel is top notch. I love it. Thanks. Thanks, man. Is there any social media or anything that you're active on that, that people could reach out to you? Or are you kind of like a recluse in that in that way? <laughs> Yeah, maybe maybe uh, if you have me on as a guest another time, I will. But uh, I'm not really a social media guy. Uh, There's no time for that, right? You're yeah. too busy. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dribble is probably where I'm on the most. Uh, but you can access any of that from my site. So yeah. How would they find you on Dribble? They just search Mitch Davis or Mitch Davis Media. Uh, yeah, I believe Mitch Davis Media. Exactly. Awesome. Well, Mitch, thank you so much for your time and coming on the show. That was a really fun discussion. I feel like we could talk about a lot more in like a future episode so we'll have to have you back that sounds great man thanks a lot for having me well if any of you do take mitch's challenge we'd love to see you work so send it to me on twitter my handle is the adrian tomp Also important note, this podcast is sponsored by Plot, the easiest way to build, organize, and collaborate on storyboards. Seriously, guys, drag and drop. Invite people to leave comments. It's the new way to do storyboards. Trust me. You can create your free account today 
at theplot.io. All the notes and related links mentioned in this episode will also be available on Plot's website at theplot.io slash 003. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.